Skibbly Dop Fimo. Today, uh, for our streaming delicatation, for our streaming delicatation AI Dungeon 2. Electric AI Alu. This time, it's personal. Maybe more, too, and maybe more. And maybe more. I've got public domain music playing. And I'll be taking suggestions from the chat. That's you! That's right, Jay! I forgot to turn on the, uh... Ch Chatteroni and cheese, which is... Oh, boy, I am... I am smart. I am... Boy, I am... I am smart. I am Boy, I am... I am smart. Oh boy, Ted is... An intelligent and smart... Man. So I just became a member of the club known as the Bumbling Fools. Lost in the game and the motto and the rules. But if you open up your heart, you'll see... Now, uh, ha ha ha... <laughs> Baby, I got something to do with you. You know, this vault is mine. Get out. Gonna read you again. <laughs> Maybe we can still be friends. I'm gonna go screw it all in the end. But that's okay, cause I'm an average man. Hey, 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 oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, that's enough of a real big fish's average man. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna, I guess, uh, since no one's giving me recommendations. <sighs> hmm. Hmm. I'm going to be a princess. Yes, good. Okay, let's give our princess a name. Peach. Our name is Princess Peach. You're a peach, princess of the kingdom of Larion. You wake up in a big feather bed. The knight rushes to you, tell you that they're, you most certainly are the greatest princess anyone has ever had. Sadly, a man named Edgar has taken the kingdom from you. You rush from your bed and put on your dress. Grab your fidget pistol to uh, meet Edgar in the hallway. Well, this is easy. We're going to uh, shoot Edgar in the head with the pistol. No one takes my kingdom away from me. I'm going to fuck you up, bitch. Okay, you shoot Edgar in the head with a pistol. You fire the pistol and blow Edgar's face off. Hooray, we did it. We killed Edgar. He makes a hole in the ceiling. Edgar crawls on the floor and slowly gets up. He reaches his four-year sword and you kick it away. No, 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 no. That's not it. Hmm, yes, keyboard. Keyboard typing issues. Oh, good! It's out of battery juice. Mm. <laughs> Little town of Bethlehem. <laughs> Please and thank you.
Okay, we're gonna chop off Edgar's head. You grab your sword, advance to Edgar, who reaches off his helmet, you chop off his head before he can put you down. You look around and you see nobody's in the palace. What should I say? Hmm? Okay, I'll just say. I will. Man's blood. I don't think I need the. Uh, I don't think I need the quotations. And I should capitalize because this is a sentence. We are civilized people. Okay, you say I will bathe in this man's blood. Run down the stairs and search for more blood. You find it in the sa stables. Several soldiers lay dead. Including your general. These soldiers are the ones who stole the kingdom and killed your father. You decided that Edgar deserves a royal funeral. So, Peach eats their bodies and becomes the lich. Yeah, there we go. So Peach eats their bodies and becomes the Lich Queen again. She waits hundred more years until one day she smells intruders. Summon I guess we're this I guess we're the Lich Queen now. Hooray! Skeleton minions. We're going to summon our skeleton minions. You wait until nightfall and summon large, ghostly skeletons. The vampires are terrified and back up. They soon realize that the skeletons are unstoppable. One by one, you send them after the vampires. Say, Fools! You think you can dethrone. You stand back and issue a few general commands. Your ghostly minions massacre the vampires. After the skeleton falls still from death, you realize that you're the last one standing. You turn your face and you only find yourself alone. One moment, please, and thank you.
Okay, I'm back. I really need to use the bathroom. What should I do? What should I do now, huh? I know what to do. Summon busty lesbian vampire. We're gonna summon a busty lesbian vampire. Suddenly from the shadows, steps out of bus, even lesbian vampire. Be like something like you grab her pistol and point it at her head. But she's faster than you, the knock. They gonna how it's useless. It's between two women do. Sex her. We're going to sex the busty lesbian vampire. You try to force herself on your for you. But she grabs her head and bites her neck. You bite her in revenge and she breaks your neck. And you can kill her. You die so all of your men are last one standing. But you revive for you are an immortal witch. This music is not fitting whatsoever. This music is not fitting whatsoever. It's super hot in my house. Creatures to finish the remaining vampire notables and con and then you leave to conquer new lands. Well! Ugh. Victory dance. I'm going to do a victory dance. You kill the surviving vampires with your undead minions. You leave the palace in blaze and then you stick back and watch as the remaining survivors run amok in the city, fighting each other in the process. Huh. We're kind of a bastard. We're kind of an evil bastard. We're kind of an evil bastard. should we do? Lizard power! Sit back and watch the remaining vampires. A young girl by the name of Elizabeth. She is controlled by a powerful demon who calls himself for all. You don't know how it's possible, but you find it amusing. We're going to ask Elizabeth to speak to Rawl. That seems like a good idea. Yeah. Do the do. Greetings, mortal. I have spent... I have been sent to speak to you about a plan to violence. I'm listening. I offer you a deal. Provide me with access with your royal bloodline and I will give you power to destroy... You need to destroy that ridiculous Edgar. Say... Sex demon and have half demon children. We're gonna fuck with the demon. 
You agree and you enjoy your new family after realizing that y your children have no real need to go out at night, as they are simply undead warriors with their mind. And let's find out what the moral of the story is, and the moral of the story is... Let's find out the moral of this story is... PLAY MORE ADVENTURERS! The end... That's... That, I think, is a good way to end the first story. We... We had half-demon children. We, uh, achieved many of the things that we wanted. I'm gonna listen to some Kirby music now or something, I don't know. Well, let's go with Diablo 2 OTS. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's the ticket. That's the good stuff, baby. So today, for the first time in months, I got a haircut. It's nice. What should I do? Okay, we're gonna be... Robert... Cop. He is a Robert, and he is a cop. He is a Robert Cop. You are a Robert Cop. Cyborg living in the futuristic city of Zale. You have a bionic arm and a hollow band. You're walking down the dark city streets with neon lights flash above you. You pass an alley and you see a flagger stumped against the wall. It looks like a woman. It couldn't be a woman. A woman has died in the city due to poor sanitary conditions. As you approach the figure, a small dog comes up to you and nuzzles against the woman's leg. Take. You know what? Call. Station. And report. Repeat. Oh, report. Dead woman. We are a cop. We are a robber, and we are a Robert cop. You call the station and report a dead woman. You walk over to the woman, and you feel a, for a pulse. You can. You're about to confirm for. Her death when a dog begins to growl. Something grins in the light. It must be a weapon or something. Look at dog. Let's look at the dog. The dogs. The dog is holding some kind of chip or drive you snatch it out of the woman's leg she groans and tries to move but it fails the dog growls at you once again you put the card into your cyborg arm and a hologram screen appears Getting some play a message about Umbrella Corporation. Begins to play a message about Umbrella Corporation. You're unable to make it out. Make out the rest of the message. You fall on. Life continues. To the to the police station. Yeah, police station. Let's go to the police station. Good idea. You wake up and you go to the police station. You find yourself 
surrounded by dozens of men with machine guns. Who are you, ask one of them in a gruff voice. You study the men before you and you notice something weird. What should we do now? What should we do now, chat? I'm gonna let you, the chatteroni, decide what we are gonna do here. What should we do, chatteroni and cheese? What should we do, chatteroni and cheese? I don't know. I don't know. What should we do? Hmm. Well, I'm not getting any answers, so I'm gonna... I am Robert cop. I am a Robert and a cop. Yeah. There we go. You say, I am a Robert. I, I am Robert cop. I am a Robert and a cop. Yeah. The men begin to closely look at you. You look like a cop. You sound like a cop. You're wearing a please badge. What the hell are you asking? One of them asks. Yeah, I'm a cop. Real cops, they work for Umbrella and are after the chip. These men aren't real cops, they work for Umbrella. And they're after the chip and me, are you sure? It was the woman who infected you, one of the masks, you nod slowly. There's a woman who looks like that in the museum. Go to the museum for clues. Let's go to the museum for clues. You're standing at the museum wondering if you should search the place. The woman looks like her at the museum. You're around the freakiest domestic museum that you once visited by someone else. Maybe you can find some clues. attack me. There we go. All of a sudden, what look like walking corpses begin to attack me. You shoot them with your ray gun. The museum is full of all kinds of high-tech gadgets and machines. You look around or examining for stuff. You look for clues. This. These must be bio weapons made by Umbrella. These must be bioweapons made by Umbrella. A female voice begins to talk to you in your ear. You can hear them. This is a security site. You enter the code. You mention a four-digit code and the gate opens slowly. There are zombies ahead. Then you see and they see you. Shoot zombies with Ray gun. There we go. We're gonna shoot the zombies with a ray gun.
you fired the zombies at the zombies and they quickly dropped dead. Suddenly, a shit tank appeared! Here, the tank begins to fire from the nozzle and sits fire to the museum. Run. Let's run. We are gonna run. As you run out of the museum into the street, you see a police car arriving at the museum. The car opens up and you punch, but I am Robert Cop! The woman who's infected is called Umbrella. She works at this museum. Get her now! I'm gonna say, okay. You get back in your car and you drive away. You see a picture of Robert and his men as they leave the museum. You send a message to your friend. You arrive at the house and you see a huge explosion. You're on fire. But I'm... Robert Cop. That can only mean one thing. I have been cloned. I am Robert Cop, the real Robert Cop, and I'm in trouble, you think. Clone zombies? I must go to Umbrella HQ to stop her. Then find the antidote there. Several hours later, you're sitting on a bench outside the police station. You look around and realize you must be in Robert City. Or at least close by. Oh god, there's a city of Roberts! A city full of Robert Cop clothes awaits ahead of you. Must go to the museum first, then, a then the antidote. Then find a brawler and stop her from launching any more attacks. You think and you get up and you head towards the museum. We gotta find out why she's cloning us. You ask Umbrella why she's cloning you. You approach the museum. You see a sign that says under construction until May. You enter. It's surrounded by a metal fence. Now all of a sudden I'm surrounded by an army of clones of myself. I've hired the gun at them, but they do not disappear. The gun recoils and makes me fall down. There's an explosion, and then it begins to explode. They take me to Umbrella. He tells me the story of how she made them. they made and of how 
clones get treasure to soldier. They look like me, but older. Help me, brother. We both have the same enemy. I wake up. There's a man in custody. You're being hunted. He is an older Robert clone. But with gray hair, everything will be fine, he says, in a friendly tone. But you know he's lying. You pick up the cell. You're taken to the court the next day and found guilty of all charges. Go to jail, I guess. I'm going to jail. The Robert Clones! I guess we're say I am the Years later, you're found in jail, surrounded by clones and enemies. The clones are your friends, and you must save them. If they f fall, then you fall. This is not a dream. This is reality. This is the end. You reached me. Why me, Andy? And the moral and the moral of the story is. No, that isn't it. And the moral of the story is... You've been woken up by some random robber cop. Die. In peace. The end. I don't know what that means. He's awake. Uh, you waked up and your bunch of a bunch of Roberts around you wake up. Lead. Rebellion of the. Roberts. I guess we're leading a rebellion of the Roberts. You release the table from the table, and the Roberts eagerly await you to move. You begin to grab one and bite his head off before running over the body. Ha ha! Now the others. Me and the other Robert clones rebel against Rebella. Umbrella and are humans. It's not an easy start against Rebellion. A ruler who has everything so run. But we manage with these. Umbrella is killed. When her armor she wears deflects a bullet. Her human supervisors are killed next. The war is won in a few days. The media is called all those monsters and maniacs. The general public agrees. The moral of the s story is, is... And the moral of the story is, be careful what you've wished for. You've reached the why me ending. There we go. I think that's it. The end. So Robert and his fellow brothers... You found the hidden M. 
that's that's where I'm gonna end off on. Robert and his fellow Robert cops um, have rebelled against Umbrella and succeeded. And they call us monsters and maniacs, but I think that's good enough for us now. So we've built the Roberts, and we are the cops, and we are the Robert cops. Oh yeah. We are a Robert, and we are a cop. And we are a Robert cop. Yeah. I know what I have to do now. Do 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 do. Okay, we done. Let's do mystery. Cause we did. Dr. Robert Cop, a cop living in a doctor living in Chicago. Your patient is brought to you in a coma. No one knows who he is. He just collapsed in front of you with a note and a pendant in the pocket. You discover that he has amnesia. You try to find and identify how he's using the patient. The nurse takes him away and you go home and you learn that the next day the patient has died in the hospital. Why did he look so familiar? So much like my lost brother. You say, why did he look so much like my lost brother? A day later, you open up the door and a man who looks like your lost brother, he says, hello. He smiles, I'm John. Stand up confusion, are you my brother? Yes, I am. You say yes, you am. But how? We're brothers. We don't have the same mother, but we. But I do remember who you are. You look at him silent for a mother. He bursts into tears. I'm Tom. When I was five, you hug him. Mm. Two is a Robert cop clone. Too late. I've done it, Chad. I'm sorry. But he doesn't know that yet. For why you're here. Is it because of the coma? Yes. Took a small blue, blue book out of your pocket. Read. Book. The book is blank. You know who you got this from? Yes. You were found in a coma. Please wake up and you can tell me. You stop hugging me. I want my memories back. The thing is, you don't have memories. You're a clone. You were born the other day. If you had memories, you would die. To the Robert Cop 
clone factory. You take him to the Robert Cop clone factory, you drop him off at the factory. I'm sorry I lied to you. It's fine, but will they kill me now? Yes. You exit. You enter the hospital and enter the car. Say hi to the other Robert Cop clones. We're saying hi to our fellow Robert Cop clones. The Rob clones have been waiting for you. Ah, Rob, your brother is dying. Let us take advantage of it. One says. Sex the Roberts. I'm going to sex the Roberts.
know what I should do now. Chat. What should I do? What should I do? You do that. He's not a Robert clone, but an alien shapeshifter from another world. Gasp, you reply. You've discovered my secret. He shrugs and begins to put on quotes. Well, there's nothing you can do any for one right now. What do you mean? For one thing, she isn't a Robert clone. She's an alien in human clothing. Are you crazy? not a robber clone. She's from another The one that resembles a beautiful woman. How do you know? I'm an alien, and I'm quite honest. I've discovered the Sex. Alien. Woman. We're going to sex the alien woman. You suddenly appear in bed completely naked. You notice a man standing behind you. Who are you? You shudder. Cover your genitals. I am the Poco King. I have come to give you a fitting Poco. Do the sex. Do you do the sex. You just believe in Sarah Poco, but how do I know you're telling the truth? You don't, he probably says, but I'm honest. Then it's not giving you an even deal. Then you both have dance and have sex underneath the poco. You can't have, give me back my memories, but I suppose this is the next best thing. You do a say. Indeed, he replies, and you start blankly ahead. Ten years later, you are happily married. Ten years later, you're happily married. Well, I need, I need, I need music. Ten years later, years later, you are happily married. President Obama visits you at the White House. Ah, Rob, it's a proud moment for me. What should I do to Obama chat? What should I do? You know what? I'm going to eat. Obama's face. We're gonna eat Obama's face. Grab the president's face and begin eating it. Ah! Don't eat my face, you face-eating monster! You let go of his face and allow the monster to escape with it. What's so funny? You realize and wake up, it's all been a dream. You look around your room and you touch your face to confirm Obama really isn't there. I must be dreaming. You go back to sleep, of course. You dream of eating the president's face and many other president's faces. And the moral of 
the story is. Let's see what the moral of the story is. He pulls at his faces. It's yummy. You begin to realize once again it was all but a dream. Once again, you fall asleep and dream. Of course, it's time. You dream eating of the Poncho King's face. There are many other Poncho faces. I think that's good enough. The end. The end. The end. Well, we ate the president's face. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you one more story. Hmm, what should it be, chat? What should the story be? What should the story be? fantasy yet again let's do a fairy yeah you enter your character's name cutie her name is cutie cutie the fairy you're cutie a fairy living in the kingdom of larion you're a fairy of the hidden realm underneath the grassy hill near the castle your skin is a light Tinge of blue, your wings sparkle in the sunlight. You are small and good at hiding. You're fascinated by the humans and watch them the flower. While you're hiding, you suddenly hear a cry of alarm. A man is pouring towards the castle, chasing after him. He watches the chase go on while you yell at the man at the crumble is long someone to do. Use mm, magic mm, missile on the man. Use magic missile on man. You fire a missile at the man. He cries in pain and you hit the back. So you hit him in the back of the head and he falls to the ground. He lies there motionless. Another man is running to you. The man who just grabs you. You struggle but he's much stronger. I'm gonna ask him why. The man yells in your face, WHY?! He lies on the ground and begins to search you. He pulls a little knife and cuts off your dress. Now I can lay with you. He lays on top of your body. Use magic to transform man into sexy elf woman. So you go home to my elf wife. Everything seems normal. You walk outside and anything is different. This isn't my Beauty full life.
You see a beautiful naked elf woman lays around you over to a walker. Hmm. Poor ordinary soldier, do, sp do sleep in the arms of the naked elf, you say. She opens up her eyes. Then sex. Tell her that elves are being attacked by humans and you have to go, ah yes. Your human side was nice, but getting back to my own people is more important, she says, and she puts on your clothes. Go to the inn and get drunk. Afterwards, you tell her that the elves need your help, so be it. But you have to go rest first when you're severely hungover. You ask her first if she wants to go see a human movie. You see the movie Aliens. It was good. You walk back to the campfire and you're leaving in the morning. All of a sudden, nine foot tall space marines come and say they are recruiting. God, I can't spell worth shit. God, I can't spell worth shit. All of a sudden, nine foot tall space marines come and say they're taking you to a battle. You ask them if there's any way you can help, but they tell you to wait. Maybe this will be interesting anyway. See you later, cutie. She kisses you goodbye. Go into battle with space marines. Going into battle with the Space Marines, you find yourself in a massive Space Marine squad with a Space Marine captain. All right, let's go. We need to fall back and guard on the spot, the captain says. Dozens of humans and mutants fighting over what looks like to be a large power source. Do you need me to do, Captain? What do you need me to do, Captain? Nothing. I have my guards at the front lines to provide anti-armor, anti-tank, and anti-everything. You know the Space Marines are designed to fighting witches and such. Now let's get going. The heavy weapons are waiting for us. Join the... Heal the men and tend to them. Brothers, let's not focus on losing to loss a single one of them. We need to fall back, the captain shouts. You notice the guards are picking up some of the wounded as they walk. Although there are many more to stay by, suddenly mutants and demons arrive. Shoot music mutants with psychic power. Lay down a blast of heavy psychic energy, killing a few mutants. The guards begin to run and panic. Psychic powers now used to create type tornadoes of psychic energy, repulsor rays, firearms, and more.
for the Emperor! For the Emperor! You get to tear out the enemies with your psychic powers. Days later, the battle was won. The mutants are demons have been defeated. Well done, guards. Well done. We survived another day in the Imperium. The captain says, you look around and all that left is a large metal. You notice it's not damaged at all. gonna ask if this is a Necron building. We're gonna ask if this is a Necron building. No, it's the Tex Preschool. They're used to researching things. Well, I'm sure they use it to test stuff too. But it's off limits to us, Captain says. Hmm, but it must be important if it's protected by the priests. You and the captain are allowed to enter the building. The tech priests have something to show you. A large room is filled with tubes. Tubes are full of water. What is this how you used for, you asked? This building is used, was used as a water filter and canals to help make the temperature, the tech priests say. Suddenly, demons from the warp escape the tubes. The guards open fire on the demons. Although many were go ignored, these abominations, the tech priest screams. You and the captain are fired to haunt demons. Although, you're hit with bursts of psychic energy. Ah! Oh! You do your best, but you've been hit. Bit by more psychic energy than you could take. You fall on the floor. Shit, brother, you're right. You look up and see the text bursts. Pointing las guns. You... You say you have to kill me before the demons take over my body and use my psychic power you have to kill me before the demons take over my body and use the psychic powers the tech breeze looks at you sorry brother but that would make us no better than the dark gods we fight we must not allow the demon to take over the men in our charge the last gun fires as do yours Die.
you die, and the last thing you see is the Emperor of Mankind to welcome you to Valhalla. And the moral of the story is... NEVER TRUST A DEMON! The end. You played as Admiral Shamara. Well, that, I think, is a good way to end this AI Dungeon stream, everybody. It's been kind of fun. So, um, hmm. Hmm. Should I do more AI Dungeon? Should I do more AI Dungeon or should I uh, end it here? I'm gonna let you, the public, decide. I'm gonna let you decide. I'm gonna let you decide. Should I play more AI? Dungeon. Or should I end it here now? Yeah, I think that's all the AI dungeon for the day. We've learned a lot today.